Free BSD reviews, tutorials and gaming. This small utility, um, NCDU, is, is an underrated little application in my view. It stands for NCursor's Disk Usage. And it's been out for 11 years now. I remember when they first released it. Um, I first saw it on uh, Debian, I think. And it's still actually developed. It's um, The last release came out in um, ooh, about, about January this year, I think. So it's quite recent. And it's licensed under MIT, so it's um, it's pretty close to the the BSD uh, three clause license. And it's a disk utility for um, Linux, BSD, and Unix. So you know it's it's within the family of the uh, open source software. It's very similar to the DU, uh, the disk usage utility, but it uses uh, N cursors. So whereas when you type DU in uh, your command line, it will scroll down with a large list and of course you can pipe that to uh, less or more, whichever your fancy takes you or even a text file and then scroll down with your favourite editor um, and cursors disk usage will present you with a nice scrollable using your cursor keys um, almost like a tree of information I'll show you rather than just talking about it and you can actually scroll up and down and enter each folder if you wish. Now for this, you know, I'm telling you, I've got 37 gigabytes of um, the downloads and uh, virtual and scripts. So it's telling me where all the where all the space is being used and I find it indispensable really. If I go into virtual box uh, there, you, you can go into each folder as needed and you've got Trident, uh, so yeah. It's a, a handy little utility, I think, and I have a soft spot for uh, curses and end curses utilities, so uh, this is why I also use this. I don't use this one on a daily basis, but I use it whenever I notice that uh, I've got a large amount of space used up and I can't remember where it was. So there it is. This is NCDU. Now, I've seen on a lot of um, Linux review sites, uh, channels, that they like to use HTOP. Now my preferred measurement of uh, memory and disk usage and stuff like that is from just using plain top. It works slightly different uh, on FreeBSD than it does Linux. But one program which I do keep on my screen whenever I'm doing anything intensive or um, of anything that makes the system work hard, I like to have this running because it gives you an all-round view of what's happening on your computer. It gives you everything from your network, to your CPUs, to your running processes, memory consumption. It even dis uh, displays on the screen your current uh, IP address both locally and externally. But it's something which I think is... Uh, I've never seen anyone cover this before. and I mean, I do use it. I don't use it all the time, but I do use it. And I think it's an exceptionally useful uh, program. Of course, you can make the screen bigger, you get more detail put into the side, etc. But it gives you a lot of information on this. Uh, there seems to be a lot, a lot of things going on. Uh, you can see your CPU, your memory, your swap. Uh, it tells you um, the percentages of which the user is using the system and how much is taken up with uh, various background tasks. Your memory usage, your swap usage. It's absolutely brilliant. It, it breaks everything down. Um, hmm. It gives you uptime. Of course, there's the pre-mentioned uh, IP addresses, both internal and uh, external, which uh, I will be blanking out. Your machine name, your uh, 3BSD or your system name, your network usage. It's pretty comprehensive. And what I like about it is that, yeah, there are all these separate utilities which you can get the information from. So, yeah, it tells you everything you need to know. And I think it's um, an extremely useful Utility, something which I think that most people would be better off using rather than just relying on HTOP because it gives an overall impression of what's going on in this system. Uh, and as the program is called Glances, it gives you it all in one glance, all in one area. Of course, I can't do a list of my five cursors and end cursors, utilities and applications without mentioning Midnight Commander. I think that's the one 
terminal application I think that most people at some point in their Linux or Unix experience has come across. It needs no introduction really. Um, it's a wonderful, although on first glance, if you're not used to it, it seems, you know, what is going on? It's extremely, you know, busy, but it's logical. And it's very reminiscent of um, some file managers that you can get on Amiga. You know, a dual pane, um, and you can go into different, you know, you can go into different directories on one hand, and then using the selection of function key menus at the bottom, you can then interact with it. So like copy, you know, everybody at some point has used this. So you can batch copy, batch rename, um, and batch delete if you're not careful enough. You can view uh, text files, you can, yeah, you can do all these things. And I think Midnight Commander is perhaps one of the most essential tools in any Linux or FreeBSD user's uh, toolbox. It doesn't come native, of course, on uh, FreeBSD, but it's available at just an easy install. And once you have it, if you ever find yourself dumped from the X windows or you just want to go onto a virtual terminal, then you can interact with it, your system uh, doing essential maintenance if you want using this. It's a wonderful program. It looks great, I think. You know, considering it's text-based, it's just it's laid out and it's clear. It's it's brilliant. I like it. So that's Midnight Commander. Fantastic. Mock, or Music on Console, is an Encursors based music player. Originally written by Damien Pietras and currently maintained by John Fitzgerald. Initially released in 2002, with the latest stable release being in 2016. It supports all the usual formats MP3, OGG, Forbis, FLAC, Museback, Speaks, and WAV. It's very light on system resources, with it being an N-Cursors application. And if you actually close the program, it will keep on running in the background as a daemon. Which can be absolutely fantastic if uh, you need to do some console work and you need to swap screens uh, via the virtual terminals. One interesting thing about Mock as well is that it works well over SSH. While Mock uh, doesn't really have a fancy dancy uh, GUI interface with it being uh, N-Cursors. Uh, it does have a very functional and very usable interface. You can scroll up and down the different directories. Unlike some music players which um, tend to aggregate all the music into one giant list, however it's stored on your system, Mock will actually respect the folders paradigm. It will Keep the folder structure so you can, as in this case, look, I'm scrolling up and down uh, Men Without Hats, and I'm going on to the main list, and you can see there's individual folders plus a giant selection which uh, haven't been sorted yet. I mean, it's a music player, it's, uh, it does, it, you know, there's many, many features which I've not tapped into. It supports playlists, um, I just tend to play the songs that I want, it will automatically switch to the next song uh, below it. I know there are other N-Cursors or Cursors-based music players available, but I like it. It's a good combination of simplicity and usability, I think. And this is a program that I use every day, and that's music on console. It's not all work on FreeBSD. And as in the other videos I've made about gaming on FreeBSD, you can have a good time. But in this instance, I want to show you a very simple game, a very famous game, a game that most people will actually recognise, and that's a Tetris. This isn't the official Tetris, of course. It's yeah, another Tetris clone called Bastet. But this one is fairly unique in the sense that it's played in the console and it's an N-Cursors version of the game. Uh, N-Cursors, of course, as you know, is not high-resolution graphics, but Tetris doesn't have to be. And as you can see here, I mean, it has all the basic shapes. You can manoeuvre the pieces as you need, of course. Everyone's familiar with um, Tetris. There are no bells and whistles in the game. Uh, there's no audio, sound, but it's a version of Tetris which can be accessible any time you need it, and it's very lightweight. Actually, this version, it does take me back, it takes me back to uh, a more simpler time of uh, using 8-bit computers. I remember on the Spectrum, uh, the Sinclair Spectrum, there were a plethora of uh, Tetris clones, all of various different uh, quality. Of course, there was the official one with all the bells and whistles with music, and it was uh, very, very nice. Published by Mirrorsoft, I think. 
about 1988 or something roughly like that. And of course there were the more uh, basic ones and some of them were actually written in basic by home programmers who set up the small businesses from the home. Uh, some were doing a really good job and some, some not so much. And this actually does remind me of them early efforts of the Spectrum. And that's a good thing because I remember it's all about the gameplay. I mean yes you can have whiz bang graphics and all that lot and audio commentary and special effects and it's, and it's fantastic but sometimes gameplay is where it matters and a game like this in, in the simple form as it is uh, on the console you know it, it is what it is it's a simple tetris game written in end cursors and its aim is to be played and i do enjoy this game i'm not good at it of course um but i do try i think if it was a shoot 'em up i'd do better but uh I think you need to you need to think logically and one step ahead to actually win at this game, and um, that's something that I don't do very well. Yep, it's starting to go wrong for me. Look, there you go. Oh, here we go. You see, it's, the game's going to be finished in a minute, so I'll I'll, I'll try and uh, rattle on. Oh well, I tried. Anyway, this is Bastet. It's a very small, lightweight uh, version of the game, and I'm sure you would have come across it at some point. Yeah, hey, got my name into the top list. Hey, on normal difficulty. Quite pleased by that. It went wrong, but here they go. And for those wondering, yes, the name is made up of an expletive connected with the shortened version of the word Tetris. You can guess what the bass um, is short for. And I think that's alluding to the fact it has a very um, particular algorithm, which makes a game challenging to play.